Welcome to the vlog. Welcome to the vlog. The Great Fish's vlog. Oh, welcome to the vlog. Hello, once again, Internet. And welcome to the vlog. Thanks, Tom. Um, the thing is, I've been... I'm constantly racking my brains about what I'm going to talk about when I turn this camera on. But last night I had a, I had this thought that I was going to talk about the basically the history of my gaming. Not the history of gaming, but the history of my gaming. How I got into gaming, where it started, how it went, uh, how how it happened. So I suppose we'd have to start with I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called the Astoria box or something like that. Someone told me, I'm not too sure. That might not be the word. Don't look that up on Google. Apparently it was this box. Uh, it was about so big and so wide and it went up to about that high. And I remember it had sliders on it. And the only thing you had was um, two pads. I think you had a gun. I'm not too sure. I don't think so. Maybe my, my brain is, not as good as it used to be in remembering stuff so we'll go with the pads not too sure about the gun and basically all it had was pong um that, that's basically like uh, pong you know the two sliders that used to go up up and down and then the ball used to hit the bat and go back and forth it had that uh, i think it was turned into tennis after a while um but it was basically it was a Japanese thing and it was basically, I think it was designed around a ping pong table, hence why it was called Pong. It also had another two settings, I think, uh, I can't remember what the other two settings were, but I remember always plugging it in and enjoying playing it, and that was the first ever machine I got. Then, then things got a little bit more sophisticated. Um, instead of uh, wanting to have a um, a console, which was this basically was the first ever console designed. I believe it was the first ever console made for gaming. Um, I decided I was going to have a computer. I wanted a computer. So uh, my second uh, protocol to gaming was the Commodore Plus 4. Commodore. Um, I wanted the Commodore 64, but apparently, no, yeah, no, I didn't want the Commodore 64. This was the before the Commodore 64, that's right. And it was the Commodore Plus 4, and it had games like, um, my favourite games was um, X-Zap, which is you, you flew around a map uh, shooting stuff, and I think you're allowed to touch the walls, but if people touch you, you know what I mean, it was a shooter, but it was in a small, a small box, a small maze, and I loved that. And also Punchy. I don't know if anyone has ever played the, the game Punchy. It was called Punchy.exe. And you start this game off and you basically, you, I don't know if you've ever heard of Punch and Judy. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's an English thing, so some of you might not have heard of it. But it was based around Punch, which is, you know, and he was trying to find the, the, the girl, his, his, his wife or something. And he had to jump over obstacles and over lava and stuff. And it was really, really cool. It was the first platformer I ever played. I remember that. It's, it's really deep down inside me, I can think of that. Also, uh, there was uh, Fire Ant. And another game, I don't know, it was kind of like you were a star and you had to run around the maze. And you had to... It, it was like Pac-Man. It was a lot like Pac-Man, except... Um, I don't think you could eat anything. You know, you just had to get around the maze and not get hit by people and get to the exit. I think that's what it was. It was really good. Okay, so it went from the Commodore Plus 4. After that, it was the Master System. No. No, sorry. No, after that was a handheld thing. A bit like the first Game Boy, basically, but it only had one game in it. And I remember... Um, <clears throat> swapping it for something else. I can't remember, but I think it was um, some graphic novels. And I swapped it for some graphic novels. And it was basically, you charge this thing up and it was a space shooter and you had to fly around and shoot all of these things that were attacking you. And I can't remember what it was called. But that was the first handheld I ever had. Then I went to the Master System. 
And with the Master System, gaming was getting a lot more complicated at that time. And it was all pads. It was like a thumb pad. You didn't get any of these joysticks that you got before. It was like a, a thumb pad for that. And you had to s slide your thumb around the pad to make it go in different directions. And there was only two buttons. And um, I used to love that. And there were so many games on it for it. Um, I can't remember any of them, to tell you the truth. I tell you what, it wasn't that memorable. Not really the Master System, although I really enjoyed it. I remember, I think, I remember having a gun with that one, which is where I probably got like confused with the first one about the gun, because I know that I had a gun for the Master System, definitely. And it had, um, a, I think it was called Hunt or Turkey, Duck Hunt, Duck Hunt. That's it, that's it for the gun. I went from that um, to the the Mega Drive. Again, still Sega. Uh, the Sega Master System and the Sega Mega Drive. I enjoyed Sega games and um, what really made me want to buy one of these things was that I used to go and play the 10 pence machines which you usually got in chip shops and down uh, seasides and stuff like that. You put money in it. Well, I used to spend a hell, a hell of a lot of money on these machines and I realized that if I bought a game system that I would save money in the long run because I'd have the game and I could play it anytime I wanted and all the money that I was spending on these machines I could save up to buy games but to be honest I never really bought a game for it I used to get it for my birthday and Christmas but that was the thought behind it so anyway that like I said I went on to the Sega Mega Drive and um, it was getting complicated then. Um, they were using like really good graphics. I mean, back then, this was really like revolutionary graphics. I mean, you know, stuff like Solid Snake. Um, I really, really, really love Solid Snake. I enjoy playing that game so much. And uh, there were so many other games. But I'm not going to mention them because I can't remember. I can't remember them that vividly, you know? And again, it doesn't seem like it was that memorable. You know, back then it wasn't really that memorable. I was doing it for enjoyment and I was really good at it. But, you know, it wasn't really getting that spectacular for me. And to be honest, now that all of these games are out, it's hard to remember them. So then from that, I decided to get the CD feature that they were adding to the Mega Drive. It was called the Mega CD and it, you basically attached the Mega Drive to the CD deck and then you could play CDs and that's when you started getting stuff like uh, movie sequences and stuff like that and cutscenes that were made from actual people acting movies like it was awesome uh, I remember this one game it was um, you had to fly through these sewers and you had to really quickly pick like left or right so that you wouldn't crash and it was just awesome you had to shoot rats and stuff it was awesome and, and I also remember um, a, a flight sim, but it wasn't really a flight sim, it was just, you know, pick. Basically, most of the games that had the movie sequences in it were a bit like the arcade game um, where you have to quickly press a direction, right? And then the, you know, the, the game system will pick it up and then it'll run either the left or the right sequence of, um, of movies, but it was still, perfect it was like make a choice this is what happens kind of thing you know what I mean it wasn't like um, like interactive where you can run around it was very controlled but it was very enjoyable and then from the from the mega CD I went then on to <clears throat> I think I went from that to again again Sega I went to the Sega Saturn, that's it, the Sega Saturn. And I had the Sega Saturn for a while, and the games weren't that great on it. Sega was starting to go downhill, to tell you the truth, in my estimation. And the Sega the Sega Saturn got stolen from my brother's house, and he was covered by his insurance. And he put it down as though the Sega Saturn was his. But to tell you the truth, it got stolen, so I was covered by insurance. It was really good. I suppose, in a way, he was lending it so it was in his contents so we weren't breaking the law in any way and to tell you the truth you know anything I own don't tell him unless he watches this vlog 
that um, what I own, he could just basically take any of it if he wanted to. And I wouldn't mind, because he's my brother. Um, but anyway, it got stolen. So what happened was that um, because it was covered by insurance, he ended up having a um, PlayStation, the first PlayStation, PlayStation 1, with, um, I think it was like 16 games, and that's when stuff started to get very interesting for, for me. And I started to get really addicted because these games for the, for the, for the PlayStation were just so advanced. And the way that the games advanced, it just got more and more advanced, and I just loved it. I loved it. Then from the PlayStation, I then went, uh, there, there was a long um, a pause, and then I started getting into computers and computer games. And the first one I had was made by my brother. It wasn't actually, it was made by bits and pieces from different places. And I gave him a little bit of money from my thing, and he built it for me. After that, my PCs were getting more advanced as it went along. And to be honest, my brother, he, he has built pretty much all of them that I've ever used. Exact, except for maybe the first one I ever had, which was the Commodore Plus 4, he didn't build that. But he's getting really good at building stuff. And, um, you know, fair dues to him, the computers he gave me are robust and um, rarely have any problems with them at all. In fact, most of the time I don't have any problems. But when I do have a problem, it can be replaced easily. And then it brings me to the present day where I'm just totally, I, I must admit that I am totally, I am addicted to gaming. I, because I get so much pleasure out of it, I can't stop doing it. And to be honest, I'm not going to stop doing it as long as I go for walks and stuff, which I've been doing and looking after my health and making sure that I, you know, get some walks in and stuff like that, everything will be fine. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today was um, basically my history of gaming and I suppose that's the history of gaming if you want to ask any questions which maybe you think I needed to address in this please put it in post in the comments if you want to ask any other questions post in the comments remembering that you don't have to I'll just come up with something to talk about anyway and um, I suppose that's that's all I wanted to say so uh, thanks for watching give me some thumbs up love subscribe for more and I'll see you guys next time